what sorts of IPM techniques do we use to measure and predict arthropod pest development? This presentation will go over some basic principles of pest development and thresholds, degree days and calculation methods, and insect monitoring. Starting first with methods of measuring and predicting arthropod pest development. So mammals like you and I are warm blooded. So we develop at a constant rate regardless of the temperature outside. We can regulate our internal temperature, meaning that biochemical processes progress normally. Insects, of course, do not generate body heat, so they remain at the same temperature as their environment, and therefore they depend on a favorable external temperature. This means that for insects, there's a developmental base or developmental threshold. This is defined as the temperature below which the insect's biochemical reactions cannot proceed and development therefore stops. Now this plays right into our hands for purposes of managing them since keeping track of ambient temperature makes it possible for us to track insect development. That's something that's directly related to the amount of time accumulated above this developmental base. As biologists, we divide this time arbitrarily into heat units or degree days. There are different ways to determine the amount of heat units accumulated, which is equivalent to the area under a temperature versus time graph for a given day. Here you see the temperature plot in a 24 hour cycle, starting off low in the middle of the night and peaking towards late afternoon with a developmental threshold denoted near the bottom. The simplest and least pre precise method of calculating degree days is the average or max min method, which assumes that the daily temperature graph is linear and the area beneath it is triangular. So the area beneath the curve in the triangle is one half the base times the height. This means that degree days equals the average of the max and min temperatures or the average of the max temperature and the developmental threshold if it's higher minus the development uh, threshold value. The, the sine wave method, also called the baskerville eman method, is a little more precise and assumes that the daily temperature cycle takes on the form of a sine wave. The area beneath the curve is determined by integration. This method tends to accumulate more degree days than the max-min method, particularly during the early part of the season. Most precise is the continuous integration method. This requires multiple temperature readings hourly or even more frequently throughout the day to produce a graph that's truly representative of the field conditions. So the area beneath the curve, again, is calculated using integration, which is normally handled by a computer. So in relating degree days to insect life cycles, there are several methods that attempt to correlate a pest event or activity with another event that can be measured more precisely. In the most commonly used method, it's assumed that events in an insect's life cycle often occur after the same general number of heat, heat units have accumulated each year, but usually it takes many years observations to estimate these precisely. So degree days can be used to predict events where weather data are available. If you monitor the temperature and pest activity simultaneously for many years, it's possible to build a database of events and their corresponding degree day range. And we include this table in the pest management guidelines using this database to give a general schedule of things happening with the pest biology and tree development in the orchard during the season. Now, some pest events occur at the same time as other more easily observed phenological or biological field events. For example, mites hatch from tight cluster to the pink bud stage and soft flies lay their eggs from bloom to petal fall. And finally, we have the concept of a biofix, which is defined as a distinct, easily monitored event in an insect's life history, which is used to fine tune our predictions of its activity. 
for instance, the first flight or the end of the flight or the first egg laid or the first mine observed. Moving on now to monitoring, which is a basic component of all pest management system programs and systems. Now, another way of looking at monitoring is as a way of keeping an eye on what's going on in the orchard. You can monitor for things like physical evidence, which includes such items as uh, an egg mass or a pupil case or insect excrement, such as caterpillar frass or white apple leafhopper specks. You can monitor for, for damage to the, either the plant or the fruits. This is like the smoking gun and can include overposition punctures, feeding damage to the fruit or foliage, entrance holes, or even webbing. Next comes traps. Now trapping is a key activity which serves a number of pur purposes. First of all is detection, that is whether a pest is actually present in the orchard. Traps are also used to establish a biofix like the beginning of the uh, sustained flight. And they can help with a general determination of uh, pest level in the field. Trapping also allows us to chart an insect's development, developmental progress, for instance, by identifying peak flight, which relates to egg laying. Monitoring is used in threshold prediction. If there's a developmental model, we can determine the start or egg of egg laying, the progression of hatch, or the development of specific stages. And finally, it allows us to estimate the timing of pest events. For instance, the number of days until a desired stage is reached for management purposes. Let's have a look at some of the types of monitoring traps, beginning with pheromone traps. Here's a wing trap, kind of an older style, which is used for moths. And this is a tent trap for San Jose scale adults. This is a large plastic delta trap, also used for moths, and possibly is a little more practical to use than the older wing trap. There are traps that are visual attractants. For instance, yellow panel traps used for fruit flies or white panel traps, which can be used for tarnished plant bug or European apple sawfly. This is a sphere trap, obviously a fruit mimic, which is used for apple maggots. And people have even tried a combination of the sphere and panel that uh, is called a lad trap. So let me move that there. Lad traps, not very practical, but it does work. Now, some traps contain odor attractants. These can be plant volatiles, such as fruit esters for apple maggot, as in this little pouch, or they can be food extracts used as bait, like ammonium hydrolysate, also used for apple maggot. And some traps work by physically getting in the way of the insect. This is a double-sided sticky tape, uh, tape trap used to catch uh, San Jose scale crawlers. So to summarize, the main components of an integrated crop and pest management system include monitoring, also known as scouting, to detect, identify, and determine the level of pest populations on a timely basis, forecasting, the use of weather and crop phenology data to predict when specific pest events will occur, thresholds used to determine when pest populations have reached a level that could cause economic damage, management tactics, uh, including cultural, biological, physical, as well as chemical control as needed, and not to be forgotten, record keeping, which is a very important uh, practice because annual records of pest occurrence are valuable tools for avoiding pest in the future. Now, a number of years ago, we worked to create an Apple Insect Models website within the NUA platform. This was developed to improve the delivery of different, different types of information resources to help growers time and select their pest control methods, including the use of reduced risk products, which tend to be a little more information sensitive. 
This information was essentially already available online in various places, but this website was created to bring it all together in a more accessible form. It works by calculating crop and pest developmental stages from degree day accumulations, in other words, temperature data, at New York State IPM and National Weather Service stations throughout the state. It contains models for uh, seven of the key pests in apples, apple maggot, plum curculio, codling moth, spotted tentacorn leaf miner, OBLR, San Jose scale, and oriental fruit moth. It uses degree day models supported by records of historical observations to estimate several types of information. Tree phen phenological stage, like tight cluster or bloom or petal fall, uh, pest status or activity, such as adults that are emerging from overwintering sites, pest developmental stage, in other words, what's present out there, adults, eggs, immatures, and pest management recommendations and background information. Now this year, the entire NUA website has been going through a major update and rebuild. So as a result, all the Apple insect pest models have also been updated. The entire look of NUA has changed so that now it's possible to create a personalized account and homepage, which is called a dashboard. And when you log in, you'll see a crop and IPM tools menu item at the top right, which takes you to a list of Apple tools. Scrolling down, you'll see them listed here with the capsule descriptions of what they do. So selecting, for example, the Plum Curculio model, which estimates the movement of PC adults into the orchard, clicking on this model, on the model name, generates a results page showing the current date as the date of interest, which as shown here is May 23rd, along with some information about how long it will be until you reach petal fall, right there, Let's move that out of the way here, and the current number of degree days that have accumulated since January 1st. By the time we get to May 30th, we've advanced past petal fall, and a box appears showing the estimated date of petal fall, which can be changed by the user if they've observed a different date. And below this is the number of degree days accumulated since then. So if you scroll farther down on the page, a management guide is now seen showing that the pest stage is overpositing adults, which require a petal fall spray and advising that insecticide protection should be maintained until 308 degree days past petal fall. Also at the bottom of the page, there's a series of additional links, including one that says more info. This link brings up links to a number of informational resources, including the pest management guidelines, if you wanna check on recommended spray options, as well as a link to the DEC pesticide portal where you can find copies of any product labels registered in New York State. By June 13th, you can first of all see that the system has remembered your petal fall date. And it shows the, that the degree days accumulated since then is approaching the 308 cutoff, which means adult overposition in the orchard is decreasing. This allows you to gauge the need for an additional spray before degree days reach that cutoff value. 